Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about two concepts, evolution and natural selection, and we'll just be going over an introduction to both of these, so sort of a big picture overview of what they are. Um, but we will start with, as per usual, uh, just a little bit of a description about why we care about evolution or natural selection. There is a somewhat famous quote um, by a Russian scientist who said, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. And I'll let you decide uh, by the end of this whether you agree or not, but um, it is definitely one of the most important scientific theories we have, and it allows us to explain a lot of things. Um, evolution and natural selection can explain both the unity and diversity of life. So why is it that this um, ape and this dog, and for that matter, this banana and the trees behind them, why do they all share the same genetic code? And also, um, you know, if you're thinking about any sort of organism, there are so many different forms that that organism can take. So where does all this diversity come from? And evolution also explains why organisms tend to be well suited to their environments, why they why they fit and are sort of um, have characteristics that that help them in the environments in which they live. So the rest of this um, video lecture will be sort of a, a historical um, journey through time, and we'll start with what people used to believe before evolution and natural selection became the sort of prevailing thoughts about how things work, and then we'll introduce those two topics as they come up. So in the mid-19th century, the idea of special creation was the main explanation for where all the different life forms came from. And within, embedded within this theory of special creation, there are a couple other associated ideas. So people thought that um, all species were sort of independent from one another. So they weren't related to each other, they were separate and independent. People also thought that species were static. So the way that a species looks now is the same way that it looked and behaved uh, when it was first created. So they've not changed over time. They were created and they stay that same way forever. People also thought that some species are superior to others. So uh, the clearest example would be that humans are superior to every other species and sort of depending on how similar you are to humans, maybe those species are superior to, to species that are less similar to humans. And then finally, um, the thought was that a divine being was responsible for creating each species separately and independently. So as time went on, uh, this idea fell out of favor with scientists who wanted natural explanations of how things came to be. So the idea of evolution started to take a little bit more of a center stage role. And evolution, for now, will define it as a change over time within a population. So another way of saying this is descent with modification. So the descent has to do with uh, um, this common ancestry of, of organisms and species being related to one another. So species that exist today come from species that exist before. So species related by common ancestry, but instead of being this fixed, unchanging thing, also introducing this idea that species will change over time. So characteristics can be modified over generations, and that's what this with modification part. So people saw fossils and, and noticed that species that we have today didn't don't look the same as how maybe they looked before. But people didn't know, or scientists didn't know, how it is that species came to change over these generations. Uh, we had some ideas, like there was a, a person named Lamarck who thought that um, if you use a, a characteristic a lot over your lifetime, so for example, like a giraffe will keep straining its neck to reach higher and higher leaves um, to eat off of a tree. And then as it keeps straining its neck to grow bigger and bigger and bigger, it'll give birth to a baby giraffe that already has a longer neck because its parent used the neck so much. So we had some ideas, but no one really knew how descent with modification could could be, like how do species change over time? And this is where uh, Darwin's theory of natural selection comes in. So Darwin's theory of natural selection explains how evolution can happen. How do we get changes in species over time? And before we explain exactly what natural selection is or what it 
what it says about populations, um, we're first going to take a look at where Darwin's ideas came from. He didn't come up with this idea in a vacuum. Um, he actually wasn't the only one who came up with it. There was another person named Alfred Wallace who came up with the idea concurrently. We'll focus more on Darwin um, here, but we'll just think about what sort of other ideas were in play at this time when he was coming up with natural selection and how did they inform this idea? So one thing was uh, uh, the voyage of this ship called the Beagle to the Galapagos Islands, which are a, a um, collection of islands off the coast of Ecuador. And when Darwin was sailing around this area, he saw that there were a lot of different um, versions of species depending on which island they were on. So he saw tortoises and finches and a bunch of other wildlife, a ton of biodiversity. But depending on which island you were looking at, the the like the version of the finch is going to be a little different depending on if you're on like this island compared to this one, say. So there was a lot of different, um, there was a lot of variation in the kinds of kinds of species he was seeing. He also knew at the time, and people knew at the time, that um, based on the work of people who bred animals or plants, um, that you can select for certain characteristics that you want to amplify in in a population. So for example, pigeon breeding was really popular at the time that Darwin was doing all of this, and people would breed these really fancy pigeons with special characteristics. So you can see this one, like these feathers right here are not a normal pigeon trait. So based on who you're selecting to reproduce, you, you select individuals that have the trait you want, and then you choose them to reproduce. And then in the offspring, um, that trait will show up more and more pronouncedly. Um, and then finally, there were other um, scientists or researchers who were doing work that, that directly influenced Darwin as well. One was Thomas Malthus, who was an economist, and he had this idea that there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of suffering and people living in poverty at the time, and he was thinking about why this is. And his conclusion was that the amount of resources that humans need grows more slowly, grows linearly, whereas a human population itself is going to grow more quickly or exponentially. So there's this disparity between the amount of resources that we have that we need to support the population and the size of the population itself. And so because of this, there's always going to be a sort of struggle for survival that not everyone is going to be able to survive. If there aren't enough resources, there's going to be war or famine or other sort of catastrophes that are going to cull down the population. And the other person was Charles Lyell, who was a geologist. And Lyell's idea was that, um, so previously people had thought that the earth was relatively young and the way that uh, geological things look now, so like the way a mountain is or the way that canyons are or the coastlines, the way, that, the way they are now is the way that they were made and the way that they always have been. But Lyell had this idea that simple processes like erosion or, or um, yeah, let's use <laughs> erosion as an example, that over really, really long periods of time, thousands and thousands and thousands of years, a simple process like erosion can give rise to huge canyons. Um, so he, this idea that over really long periods of time, small changes can add up to produce really big differences was also quite influential on Darwin's ideas as he was thinking about natural selection. Okay, so I've talked about all these influences, but what exactly is natural selection? What does it say? That's what this next slide is about. So natural selection is a mechanism or a process that causes evolution to happen. And remember that evolution is this idea that we're, it's a, it's a pattern that we see. And the pattern is that populations will change over time. So we're going to be more specific now when we're defining evolution, and we're going to say that it's heritable or genetic changes in the characteristics of a population over time. So we know, based on our heredity and genetics unit, that if you're thinking about a phenotype or a characteristic, that often those characteristics are based in a genetic change. So we're thinking about sort of how phenotypes or characteristics in a population are changing over time and th that those changes are due to genetic changes, heritable changes. 
So that's what evolution is. A natural solution is, a, is an explanation of how this happens. Why do we get changes in a population over time? Natural selection is the idea that we have heritable variation, and this leads to differential reproductive success. And I know that that's a lot. Um, so we'll unpack this a little bit here, and there will be a whole separate video devoted to just natural selection. So don't, don't panic. So within a population, traits are going to vary. And this is just the idea that not all organisms within a population will be identical. Maybe there's different colors, maybe there's different sizes. It could be something behavioral, but there's going to be variation within a population. And then some individuals in that population are going to be better suited to their environment. So maybe they're better able to avoid predators. Maybe they're better able to find food. Um, but there's going to be some individuals that are just better suited. And those individuals will survive and they'll reproduce. And in doing so, they're going to pass on their genes to the next generation. And these genes that they're passing on will code for the traits that helped these individuals survive. They'll, they'll code for these helpful traits that helped them find food or helped them avoid predators. And therefore, these beneficial traits will become more common in the population over time. So that's it for this video. Um, and in the next one, we'll focus in on natural selection and go over a couple examples. And um, yeah, I'll see you then.